a member of the Israeli Knesset. That's their parliament. That's their Congress. Um, she says, quote, this is not a result of eating bat soup, but was a lab engineered virus in some form or another. She said in an interview with Army Radio, Levy added that the state of Israel is used to combating biological weapons and it is impossible that life should stop because of the coronavirus. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Danny Shahom, who holds a doctorate in medical microbiology and who for over 20 years was a senior analyst for Israeli Defense Forces Intelligence for Biological and Chemical Warfare, said, so that guy seems pretty legit. He says, quote, coronaviruses, particularly SARS, have been studying and studied in the Wuhan Institute of Virology and are probably held therein, said Shahom. In principle, outward virus infiltration might take place as either a leakage or as an indoor unnoticed infection of a person that normally went out of the concerned facility. This could have been the case with the Wuhan Institute of Virology, but so far there isn't evidence or indication for such incident. So this guy who's a reputable guy says, we don't have any indication indication that this is what happened, but it very well could have happened. Now, they're pointing the finger at China. So he's saying, look, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, they've been studying viruses. They're doing weird stuff with viruses in there. So the virus could have somehow leaked from the facility or maybe somebody who works inside the facility accidentally got infected and they left the facility and then they went and infected a bunch of people in Wuhan. He's saying that's pretty possible. Could have happened. We don't have evidence of it, but it's possible. So the, the question that the Russians brought up about Italy, so the question many of us have is, well, why would Italy be a target? I mean, it kind of makes more sense why China, if the United States did unleash this as a biological weapon in some way, it makes sense why China would be would be a target. Uh, we're in a trade war with China. We are trying to pressure them into bending in the way that we want. It would make sense that you would want to maybe unleash a virus that's going to be a bit uh, uh, you know, it's going to keep them busy for a while and it potentially is going to harm their economy, kind of making them reach a point of desperation. That makes a bit of sense. Same thing with Iran, right? I mean, if you were a terrorist organization or if you were a government that didn't like another government and you wanted to somehow cripple them, I mean, we've seen that we've been doing economic sanctions on the countries we don't like. We continue to economically sanction them. The Iranian people have been rallying. So they've been having these economic sanctions against them from the United States. And the Iranian people understand that the reason why their economy is tanking is because the United States has been putting these debilitating sanctions on them. And they've been rallying over and over and continuing to point the finger at the United States. They're unwilling to topple their own government, which is why you'd put in economic sanctions. You do it so that you pressure the people to a point to where they hit a point of desperation and they topple their own government. They start blaming their own government. Well, it wasn't really working in Iran. It's also not working in Venezuela. Um, but when uh, the Iranian, so the, the idea would be to get them to a point of desperation. So if you were to unleash a virus in Iran that sort of began to put a lot of pressure on their medical system and in turn a lot of pressure on the government, you might be able to then make the change you want to make, right? So that's the theory around that. But why Italy? That's the big question. Why Italy? If that was the case. Now, Italy, to me, it makes sense, again, why Italy would end up with so much of the virus. There's a lot of Chinese tourists in Italy, more than anywhere else in the world, uh, maybe minus the United States. There's a lot of Chinese tourists in the United States. But, but okay, so let's, let's entertain this. Why Italy? Well, because about a year ago, Italy signed up, unbeknownst to the European Union and unbeknownst to the United States, everybody was blindsided last March in 2019, when Italy signed up to be a part of China's new Silk Road. Nobody knew that the Italians were going to do this. The U.S. government were, was blindsided by it. Mike Pompeo said he was blindsided. Everybody said, well, you know, we didn't know what the Italians were doing. Sure, they were going to China a lot. These Italian officials were going to China. But they said, the Italians, they're kind of sporadic. Uh, they're, we don't really know what they're doing. And so we just didn't realize that they were signing up for the new China Silk Road which was a slap in the face to the EU and a slap in the face to the United States. So this is coming from the New York Times. It says here, this was from March of 2019, Italy's deal with China signals a shift as U.S. influence recedes. This month, as the United States continued to engage in a trade standoff with China and leaders of the European Union banded together to demand an end to unfair Chinese business practices, Italy took another route, China's new Silk Road. In a move that's 